um, and um, and then give and then give you an opportunity, give participants an opportunity to ask questions, to bring their challenges to the table. Um, and we, we're hoping that the bulk of this is is more like a, a workshop. Um, so if if that works for everyone, um, Margo, do you want to take it away? <laughs> Sure, I can go ahead and get started. <laughs> you make it sound like it's such a wow. <laughs> it is. So, well, it really, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, this is just kind of set up. We wanted to give folks, and, and so some of this is just going to be, I'll be honest with you, for some of you, this is just going to be like second nature, the things I'm going to cover. But we wanted to start covering some of the things that, that you need to have and you need to do kind of as planning, whether it's for vaccination or for anything else. Um, so I'll go through my pretty little presentation that we've got going here. And let me get my presentation mode going again. I love when this happens. It doesn't want to behave. Oh, there we go. All right. So obviously you've heard Elaine's voice and you've heard mine as well. Um, so most of you, if you've if you've had any interaction with uh, with Juvari over the last, I'm I'm going to say you know 15 plus years, you probably know who Elaine is. Um, my name's Margot Reuter. I've been here for over seven years now, and I, you've probably talked to me as well. I started out in the support world, um, and I've transitioned through. I do support implementations and training. Um, so there's, if you're really bored, there's a really quick bio kind of on Elaine and I. And, and I can tell you that the last section of mine also applies to Elaine. We are both Packers fans. So, <laughs> But you'll hear both of our voices as we go through here along with you might hear Akshay and others jump in. Um, our agenda today, introduction, we've kind of covered that. So like I said, you'll hear both of our voices along the way. We're going to talk about dashboards, we're going to talk about incident types, and we're going to talk about forums, and then we'll do a, a question and answer and an, and an open forum type of concept. Um, so if you have questions along the way, please feel free to stop us and ask them. Um, but I like to put that section at the end just to make sure if anybody, you know, forgot or as we're going through all of a sudden they think about a question but want to just hold it till the end, that's completely up to you. Interrupt as needed. So first thing we're going to talk about are dashboards. And I'm going to guess that most of you on the phone are pretty familiar with them. But for those that aren't, dashboards are just a display. It's configurable. It lets you view information that's appropriate and logical based on your location or role. So are you an EMS person? Are you at a hospital? Are you at the EOC? Are you um, at a regional level, at a state level, things like that? Dashboards are designed using configurable gadgets, and we'll go through and look at each of those different gadgets just in a very basic level. Again, we're trying to keep this at just a, this is just kind of an, an, a really basic, here's some of the things that you need, here's the basics to configuring things. Um, dashboard gadgets can contain division-wide, division-specific, or incident-specific data. So you can actually configure a gadget so that it shows information across um, the whole division. You can configure it show, so that it only shows incident-specific data. Some gadgets only will show all re the whole region's data and things like that. So we'll look at a couple of those. Dashboards can be configured at the division level or at the user level. Now I'm making that statement, but I also want to let you know that if you are creating a personal um, a personal dashboard and you say, oh, I want to set this up, I want to test this, oh, I really like this, you know, the rest of the region wants to use it. If it's a user level one, you can only share it with others. You can't actually elevate that to a division level one. So I recommend to folks that if you're creating something that you're, you know, we'll call it playing around with that the division might end up using um, for those folks that are at that top level or, or you know, at certain division levels, that you create a division dashboard. If you don't like it or if you want to make it your own, you can copy a division dashboard to a personal dashboard, but you cannot make a personal dashboard a divisional dashboard. So I just want to make that, make you guys aware of that just in case you run into that situation. Um, dashboards can be configured at the division level or the user level. So oh, that's what I was just talking about. So, um, and they can be shared with others. So you can create it and you can share with others based upon their role. So are they EMS people? Um, are they regional level people? Are they hospital administrators, hospital users? Are they public health? 
Are they an EOC member? Things like that. You can share it with a division type like a, an EMS versus a hospital, or you can share it with a specific division. So I can come down and say, you know what, I, this particular dashboard is specifically for Mercy. This specific dashboard is for Summit, things like that. So you can actually see, um, you can actually limit and configure that sharing so that only the people that you want to see it can see it. Now, you cannot set it, so for those of you that have EM resource access where you can actually restrict views to a specific person, you cannot restrict it down to the specific person. It is only on that role division type or division. So different dashboards that we have, we have the active incidents in the region, the active incidents for the division. Um, those two are basically, you'll, you can see those here, those are just a list of all the incidents. In the case of in the region, it's going to tell you all the incidents that are currently running in your region. The active incidents for the division is going to be configured so that you actually see any active incidents that that particular division is a participant in. So whether you're an, EM, you know, it can be configured for an EMS agency, it can be configured for, um, for a hospital. And a lot of times you'll use that on a, on a specific view. Maybe you want to show it for all different ones, or maybe it's going to be a hospital-specific view or an EMS agency-specific view, so that they can see all the incidents that they're currently involved in. This is especially useful when you have more than one incident running, so that you can actually kind of keep track of, of how many incidents you're, you're a participant in as part of your agency or your hospital. Um, we have the client list gadget, which is the one that you see here on the left. It basically just gives you a list of all patients that meet a specific criteria that you've, that you've predefined. And it's just a list. It gives you different fields and things like that. And then we have a client summary, which is what you're going to see in that lower right box there. And those can be configured any number of ways. This is what we call a counter box. They also do a pie chart, a bar chart, and things like that. And so those are kind of nice because it gives you that it gives you that at-a-glance view with numbers um, rather than having to come through over here on the left and count and say there's five here, there's six here, you know, count and say, okay, how many reds do I have, how many greens do I have? It gives you that nice listing together. You can also use this to have it identify locations that people are at, locations that people have been encountered, um, discharge options, so you can see how many people have maybe been discharged to home, how many were discharged to a long-term care facility, how many people left AMA, things like that. So now we're going to go, let's see if I can successfully stop my presentation here. There we go. And we're just going to come over here into the dash into the actual application, and we're just going to look at dashboards. So when you're going to create a dashboard, you're going to come over here to configure. Maybe you've already found one that you like and you want to make a personal dashboard, in which case you can select to copy it. If you want to create a new one, here's where you have that option to add a personal dashboard or a division dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and set up a division dashboard, and you'll notice you have that opportunity to add gadgets. So when I click Add New Gadgets, you can see these are the different gadget types that I just talked about. So we've got that active incidence in the region. You'll notice we have the opportunity to make this bigger, make it smaller. Um, we can resize, so we can shrink it. Um, we cannot resize left to right other than by using the dashboard layout option. So if I wanted to have it smaller on the left and bigger on the right, or bigger on the left and smaller on the right, we can do that. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and stick with my uh, with my two column setup. We can go ahead and add an active incident for the division and you can see at this point I have to select what division that gadget is going to display for. So I'm going to come down here and I'll select St. Elizabeth's and we'll apply that. And you can see St. Elizabeth's is an active participant in two different um, in two different incidents. So one of them is called Marathon, one of them is called MCI. And you can see they've been running, this one's been running since August of 2019, this one's been running since July of 2020. So we do have that option in there where you can go ahead and select, and this is where I said usually you're going to set that at your um, either hospital level or agency level so that you can see what incidents your facility is participating in. Next, we're going to go ahead and add another gadget here, so I'm going to add the client list. 
And you'll see if I click the drop down, I have the option to select from a number of different filters. In this case, I'm just going to go with the all clients. And you'll notice I have the option to enable incident mode. Now, if I take that off, it's actually going to only, it's going to display that patient list across the region. So it's going to be everybody within the region in all incidents. It's not going to filter out by specific incidents. So I'm going to go ahead and enable incident mode here and click apply, and you can see everybody that's in here. If I turn on incident mode up here at the top, you'll see I have the option to select an incident. And if I do, you can see that's going to change the people that show up. The other thing you'll notice, whereby this is showing all of the incidents in the region, this is showing all of the active incidents for St. Elizabeth, they both have an orange banner. Down here, the all clients has a blue banner. That blue banner is an indicator for you that the data in that gadget is specific to the incident that's been selected. You'll notice conveniently enough that when incident mode is selected, this button turns blue, the same blue that you see on the banner here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off, and you'll notice it turns orange and I have all of my patients again. Next, we're going to go ahead and add a client summary, and I'm going to drag this up here. And you'll notice again I have that option to select my filter, so I'm going to go ahead and select all clients. Next, I can choose how I want those patients grouped. So I can say, okay, do I want to group them by what incident they're in? Do I want to group them by age ranges? Do I want to group them by where they're currently located? Um, whether it's if that's a facility, that means we want to see who's at hospitals right now. You've got all of these different options. So you can select, again, like we talked about that disposition, if you want to keep a count of, you know, a, an easy count of who's been, who's been discharged and how they've been discharged, you can do it by encounter location. For hospitals, sometimes you like to see that by ETA. Hey, I've got 20 patients coming my way. When are they going to show up? And then you can also select by triage category, which you know is always a fun one because it gives pretty colors. Once you select that, you have additional options of how you want to sort them. So what order do you want those triage categories to be in? Do you want them based on count? In other words, highest to lowest, lowest to highest. Do you want them by name, um, which you, know, you can do. It's kind of an interesting one. You can do it by severity or you can do it by sort value. I'm going to go ahead and select by severity because that's a fairly logical way to do it. Next, we have our option of how we want that displayed. So we can do a pie chart, we can do a bar chart, we can do a table or a counter box. The counter box is the one that I displayed in the presentation, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like if we do a bar chart. Um, again, I have that option to enable incident mode. If I have that turned off and I do turn on incident mode, this will stay orange and will display the data for all of the patients for all incidents in the region. I can also elect to show zero values. So that way I can see if there are none, it will actually show me a zero. And that's some, an option that we get for the triage category selection. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And you can see I, I love the way the system does this because for some reason it thinks that you can have part of a person. Um, but again, you can see just at a glance that you've got a lot of red patients. You've got a few yellow um, you know, and green. And you'll notice as I hover over that you can see the numbers here so that you don't actually have to read that there's six. You can just hover over it and it will tell you how many there are. But it gives you that nice visual of how it looks. Now, for those of you that have been with us for, uh, for a long time, you will recognize this next gadget. So I'm going to go ahead and use that same all clients filter. And then I'm going to go ahead and group them by, we'll do encounter location. Um, and I have the option here to show only incident mode locations, which means it's going to strip out any other locations, and it will only show me the incident mode locations. In this case, I'm not going to select that. I'm going to have it go ahead and show me all locations. And for those of you that have been with us for a while, this will be a familiar view to you because back in the old days, um, this was actually one of the views that you had that you would see to show you how many people were where with what you know, with what triage category level. Now we give you the option to do some additional configuration. So for example, I have this configured by encounter location, which means anywhere that a patient was encountered is going to show up on here versus where they're currently at. So those are the basics. And then when we go ahead and save that, you can see I need to give it a name um, and we'll call it office hours 
888-916. And then I can share it. So here's where you have that opportunity to share it. So I'm going to share it with the regional administrator role. I can also share it with a division type. So you can say I can either share it with the region, I can share it with mobile providers, which would mean anybody who is at a mobile provider would be able to see this dashboard in their drop down up here in the top left. Or I can share it with a provider facility, which means that anyone at a hospital would be able to see it. So I'll go ahead and share this one. Um, I'll share this one with a provider facility. And then I can actually limit beyond that to a specific role within the facility, but I'm just going to share it with the – oh, I have to select it. Sorry about that. So we'll share that with the admins. And then the last option that we've got is that division option. So I can go ahead and say I'm going to share it. In this case, I'm going to share it with St. Elizabeth's, and I'm going to share it with that ED admin role, but I also want to share it with the ED normal role. And so you can see I've now shared this dashboard with all of these different people. So when they click on the down arrow here, they will be able to see that Office Hours 916 in their dashboard list. So does anyone have any questions about that? If not, I'm going to go ahead and flip back over to, uh, to my PowerPoint here quick. All right, I'm not seeing or hearing any. I'm going to go ahead and head back over to the slideshow here. The next thing we're going to talk about inc is incident types. And this is another thing that, that you need to have. You have to have some type of incident type set up so that you can create your incident based upon it. Um, incident types are basically a template. It lets you predefine potential incident sites and providers that are likely to be needed. So this can be really handy. You can base this on, on the type of incident where, you know, for in this, like in this case where we've got a vaccination clinic and we've got your different incident sites, or you could actually base it on a region where you might say, hey, if we have an MCI in region four in this particular area, it's going to involve these hospitals and these EMS agencies. And that way, all of the other folks in the region don't need to see or be involved. They won't even see it in their drop-down list. It'll just be those folks that are involved. And that comes in really handy when you have especially larger, you know, larger areas where you might have like, hey, these people are going to respond if there's a problem, um, for example, for, for Bradley, in the St. Louis area. So if they're right in that St. Louis area, there's going to be a handful. But maybe if you get out from there, there might be a different group that's going to be, that's going to be participating, that's going to be providing. So your EMS agencies are going to change. And you might want to have different incident types based on that so that when something happens, you don't have to go through and pick which providers. You're like, oh, this one is in St. Louis, so I need hospitals A, B, C, and EMS agencies, you know, one, two, and three. You only need to pick that incident type and say create an incident based on this, give it the information, and you go from there. It comes in very handy. And this is a really nice one. It's short and sweet. There's only one, uh, one slide for it here. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll flip back over here, and I'll just walk through that incident type. So to get there, you're going to go to System Settings, which is going to take you into this menu. From here, you're just going to select Incident Type. And then you can create an incident type. And again, most people have some type of standard operating procedure. You guys have configurations that you guys know, hey, when we have this type of situation, these are the people that are going to be involved. So I can come in here and I'll go ahead and we'll say this is for a, um, for a vaccination clinic. And then I can come in here and I can add those incident sites. So we have an add site option. I can come in here. And depending on what my workflow is, I can say, you know what, I'm going to have registration, and then I'm going to have a screening section, and then I'm going to have, um, what else should we have here? We can have um, ugh, vaccination and monitoring, and then We'll call it release instead of discharge. So we can put that in here. We can set up providers. So if we know, obviously we have, you know, the COVID vaccination is coming. So if you're setting up in advance for this, you can say, hey, these are the providers that I know I've already got set up. Uh, when we do a vaccination clinic, these are the people that might be there. Or you might say, you know what, I don't know who my providers are going to be because I'm going to be opening up a clinic in different places. So I might want to have different incidents, one for each area. 
um, maybe one for each vaccination pod. And so I'm going to actually create an incident for each one and I will pick my providers at that time. So you've got both of those as an option. And then you can go ahead and hit save. Ah. Thanks, Bradley. Let us know if you have questions. Okay, um, so that's our incident type. It's pretty basic. Most of you guys have been through that before. Next, we're going to talk about forms. Uh, custom configured forms are the point of entry for all of the patient or client information. They are configured based upon your workflow. So you may not have the same workflow as someone else does, or you may even have different workflows uh, depending on the environment, the situation. Uh, an influenza pod may process differently than a COVID pod. There might be additional information required for one over the other. Uh, maybe a particular type of MCI has a different workflow than others things like that. So they can be configured based upon your workflow and oftentimes, and, and I, it's rare that you actually have a single form used for a single client as they transition through an incident. It's very common that multiple forms are used as they go through. Um, obviously your EMS folks are going to have a form that they're going to use. There might be something else for EMS at the point of transport versus on site. And then another one as well for the hospital. And then the hospital might have an additional one for folks who actually walk into the hospital. Forms can be configured for data entry using the web or the light applications. Um, that form for the web also applies to the light for those of you who have that application or for entry through the mobile application. They can be made available to users based upon their role or division. So if you have maybe an EMS agency or a hospital that wants a, a form that's specific to them because they want additional information or they have a certain situation that they want to query patients and track them for, you can create a form and make it available only to folks at that division or you can make it available to specific roles. So if you say this is an EMS form, only EMS folks are going to be able to see it. This is a hospital form, we're only going to allow hospital folks to see it, things like that. Also, just as a note for you, for those of you who may have seen some of the screenshots of some of the forms that we've done, or maybe you've talked to other folks and you've seen forms that they have that you like, we can copy forms from other regions and then you would have the ability to modify and customize them for yourself. But I wanted to make sure that you guys know we do have that ability. We've added it in in the last, I want to say, year or two here. Um, my how time flies when you're having fun, right? But you can copy forms from other regions and then modify them. So you can either have an administrator from that region go ahead and, and send you a file that you can then upload, or you can, if you get approval from them, you can ask us, we can share it. If it's one of the forms that we've created, obviously we're more than willing to share them with you. We don't want you to have to reinvent the wheel if what we have created works for you. And next, we're going to go ahead and do another demonstration here. So in terms of this, I wanted to go ahead and show you some of the different forms that we've set up. You guys have probably seen some screenshots, but I wanted to show you some of those vaccination-specific forms that if you've watched the video, you've seen kind of a walkthrough of them, but I just wanted to display some of them for you. So you've got that vaccination registration form where you're going to have to select the incident involvement in that current location. Anything with a red asterisk, as you guys know, that means it's required. Your ID is required. For a form, there are two things that are required. One of them is a location, whether it's a current or destination location. The other thing that's required is an ID. My recommendation is that you always require that incident also. So that way your, your clients or your patients are associated with an incident. It makes them a lot easier to hunt down when you're looking for a particular patient. And you can see we've got all sorts of information in here that we're requesting. Some of it is required, some of it is not. So that would be registering that user. We also have the screening section where you can see we've got additional information. You can say, hey, were they symptomatic? Yes or no? Are they a healthcare worker? So we've got all these different questions and these are customizable. These are not a static bit of information where you have to stick with what we have. Those are all customizable as are the screening questions. So there may be, um, you know, there may be guidance that comes out when the COVID vaccination comes, 
when the COVID vaccine comes out regarding questions that you need to ask from before you actually are allowed to give them a vaccination. So you can pose these questions to them. You've also got the question of allergies. Obviously, we want to know if someone has allergies, whether they're medication allergies. Um, in some cases, we might want to know if there's food allergies. So some folks might not know that they have an, aller an allergy to thimerosal, but maybe they're allergic to eggs, and that's obviously a trigger for you there. And we've got that vaccination administration. So when you're actually giving them that, that vaccination, you're gonna enter all of that information. You're gonna enter any vital signs. And again, these can be customized. Um, you can even include things like blood glucose and things like that if that's appropriate when you're, when you're working with folks who are maybe diabetic. And then you've got this option for your medications administered where you can come through here. You can select what was administered and then you'll notice you have this more button. And this is where you can actually enter in the dose, the amount, the route, the sites, who administered it, who ordered it, if there was a reaction, um, state administered, so where was it administered at, your lot number, your manufacturer, um, and the expiration date. Now this can come in handy because there at times are recalls or there's something that happens with a particular lot number or maybe it's a particular manufacturer and you can actually come back through and search for that information and find all of your patients that you used a particular lot number on or a particular manufacturer uh, medication on. So just be aware that you have that ability to put that additional information in. On top of that, we have your observation options. So I'm gonna go ahead and change forms here. So maybe we send folks, hey, you got your shot, now you're gonna have to go get observed for 30 minutes. And you can go ahead and identify an observation, hey, their blood pressure is good, um, their temperature is still okay, everything looks good. And then once you go ahead and everything is good, they've spent their time, everything's checked out, you can go ahead and discharge them. And then here's where you're gonna have those discharge options that like we talked about in the dashboard that you can track and say, hey, who was, who was discharged, maybe we sent them home, maybe we sent them back to a skilled nursing facility, maybe they had something happen and we had to transport them to the hospital, that's an option as well. Um, so you have a lot of different options in here. From a hospital standpoint, you can identify, you know, if they left AMA, if they were admitted, things like that. So you've got all of these options and these are customizable again. So the majority of what you see within EMTRAC is actually customizable in terms of the data that's included in there. So let me go ahead and we've covered all of that. That's kind of the basics to the forms. You can see we also have information. Um, MCI triage is a very common one that you'll see. The EMS folks tend to use this. And you can see it, it involves, they enter just very basic information. They can scan a driver's license if they have one, enter alternate ID information. Um, and then we're just asking triage category and are they contaminated or not and where are they? And then you can also select where are they going. So you can customize these forms. You could include, you want names, ages, date of birth, the whole nine yards. There's a lot of different options that you have within here. For those of you that haven't seen them yet, we also have added within the last few years some assessment options. So we have the option for a STEMI assessment section where we actually enter in, you know, is there, is there a suspected acute MI and all the additional information that you can put in there. And then that will actually send through, if you're using incoming patient notifications, we can actually send a notification through that will say, hey, you have a STEMI patient coming that notifies the hospital of all the information that you've entered, and then you can go ahead and have that recorded. Um, so it's recorded for the patient, the hospital knows they're coming, and they can prepare for your arrival. I'm going to come back over into my PowerPoint here really quickly since I've kind of been covering some of the things on this. Most of you may have received the email that was sent out uh, that talked about our vaccination tracking. It included some links. So for those of you that are interested or maybe you didn't get those, this is the URL that you can go to and down at the bottom of this URL is where you're actually gonna see the administrator and the clinic guides. And there's also a video that basically walks through the whole vaccination tracking process in EM Track. Let me go ahead, I'm gonna escape out of here. And I just wanna show you, this is what that page will look like when you open it up. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, 
you can see you have this vaccination tracking section. And if you click on any one of these, it's going to go ahead and bring up either the administration document, the tracking doc, or the clinic document, or that video tutorial that walks you through the whole process from beginning to end. And that's everything that I have to cover for today. So if anybody has any questions on anything that I've covered today or anything new, please feel free to ask. We have done a recording of this session, so it will be made available if anyone is interested in it. Um, but otherwise, we'll go ahead and see if anybody's got any questions. If you do, please feel free to ask them. Great. Um, thank I you want to for thank that. everybody for attending. Thanks so much for attending. If you guys have any questions, questions, please reach out to your client success manager and they can guide you to the appropriate location for answers. Right. And we'll see everyone in a couple of weeks. Margo, thank you so much for leading the training session. No problem. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.